Uh, so tonight we're going to start uh, module three. I have the home page of the class page um, visible on my screen. I'm going to go to modules and go down to module three, the soft jaw mill discussion. Open up the page, there's an image of the drawing. Now this is a, a soft jaw made out of aluminum that you would find on the Kurt Vice. So if you go back to the homepage, I'm just gonna show you what this is real quick. When we machine a part, we have to hold on to it. And we're looking at a vice here. I don't think this is a Kurt Vice, it might be, but looking a little older and not quite a Kurt style, but it's, it's a vice that we hold on to the part with. The jaws, which are usually hardened, um, they're fastened to the movable part of the vise here and this part over here. Sometimes we'll cut aluminum soft jaws so that, we can, so that we can cut profiles into those jaws to hold on to oddly shaped parts. So that's what we're gonna uh, machine tonight. We're gonna machine, or that's what we're gonna start tonight. We're gonna start modeling up an aluminum soft jaw that would fit on a Kurt, I believe it's a D675 vise. So I'll go back to module three. I'll go to the go to the discussion page or the project page. Yeah, so soft jaw for Kurt D675 and 688 series vice. We'll start by modeling up this part. And we're gonna use the Mastercam software to create a three-dimensional model of the part. So let's do this. We'll go into Mastercam. If you haven't already started a new session of Mastercam. And let's maximize our graphics area. Let's minimize any managers that we might have open. I'll make sure that my wireframe color is set to green or color 10. And we'll start creating the 2D representation of the part, which will ultimately turn into a solid model or a 3D representation of the part. I'm looking at the drawing. And this view here pretty much defines what the part's gonna look like. Uh, we have most of the dimensions defining the features on this part from this view. So let's do this. Let's create a 2D representation of the part based off of what we're seeing in this view. And then we'll give it some depth. We'll start uh, using the extrude tool to give this part some depth in the Z axis. I'm gonna start by creating a rectangular shape that measures six inches by 1.88 inches. And I'm going to center that on the default origin or the default WCS. Back inside of Mastercam, I'll go to wireframe. Under rectangle, you'll find a rectangular shapes. Let's start by setting the origin to the center. Uh, for the type, I'm accepting the default settings. Uh, type is rectangular, method is base point. Uh, set the origin to the center. Set the width to six inches, and then set the height to 1.88, and then hit enter. After you hit enter, move your cursor into the graphics area. You, sh you should see a preview of that rectangular shape attached to your cursor. Position your cursor close to the origin. You'll see it lock onto the origin. I've got this small icon popping up next to my cursor. That's an indicator that I'm locked onto the origin. Once you see that indicator, or once, you're, once you can see that you're locked onto the origin, left click. I don't need to rotate it. So this control right here, I'm just going to ignore. Double click, or I'm sorry, double check to make sure that the width is set to six. And then the height is set to 1.88. You need to be careful because if your cursor is in a field and you roll your scroll wheel, you can actually make changes to the values that are in these fields. So double click your double check your values, six by 1.88, and then select OK. And that'll finalize the creation of this rectangular shape. Before I move forward, I wanna make sure that it's uh, placed correctly. If I were to analyze the outer edges 
the values that I get should be half of the length and half of the height. So let's try and do that. Let's go to the home tab. If I go to analyze dynamic position, so in the analyze section under dynamic, you'll find position. And if I select an entity, and in this case, I'm locking on the endpoints. If I select one of these endpoints and left click, a dialog box appears and it tells me the X, Y coordinates relative to the current coordinate system. So this X is half of the overall length. And then this Y is half of the overall height. And that's what I'm looking, that's what I'm checking right now. This is correct. If it was, if it wasn't centered about the origin, these values would be different. So from here, I'll select okay. And we can now move on to the next step. And I got ahead of myself. I didn't actually reference the instructions given to us on the project page. So let me back up a little bit. On the project page, we have a modeling section. This is modeling soft job. Using the drawing above, generate a three-dimensional model using the MasterCam software. Step one, use the rectangular shapes tool to create the base feature of the part. We just did that. Step two, use the point position tool to create two points at the center of each of the holes. Okay, let's do that. I need to place a point and then we go back to the drawing. I need to place a point here and then I need to place a point here. Now the origin inside of MasterCam is centered here, but you'll notice that the center of this hole, that the location where we wanna place this point is relative to the lower left corner of the rectangular shape. So I'm gonna use the point tool and I'm gonna place a point relative to this corner. It's gonna be 1.063 in the X and then 1 point, I'm sorry, 0 0.94 in the Y. Now, in reality, we're seeing some rounding issues here. This 1.063 is actually 1.0625. It's rounded to three decimal places. So let's do this. We're going to, because I can see where this is coming from, I'm actually going to enter this in at 1.0625. I'm going to carry it to four decimal places. If you were to open up a calculator, let me show you what I'm talking about. Overall length is six minus 3.0625. Is 0.875, so I've got, let's see here, 0.412, that's interesting how they do that wrong. So six minus 3.875, 2.125, that's correct. Now, if I divide this by two, That's where I'm getting the 1.065 from. So this is a rounding issue. So what I'll do is I'll place the point relative to this lower left corner. It's going to be 1.065 in the X, 0.94 in the Y. Place that point or to create that point, I'll go to wireframe, point position. I'm placing this point relative to the lower left corner. So if I hold the shift key down, let my cursor lock onto the lower left corner, left click. I can now click on the sphere. When I click on the sphere, the field pops up next to my cursor. You can type in 1.0625 comma 0.94. Let me check those numbers. So 1.065 and 0.94, hit enter once. Hit enter twice, hit enter a third time, and it finalizes the creation of that point. We can double check our work. Go back to the home tab. In the analyze section, you can select analyze distance, lock onto the endpoint, lock onto the point, and then I'm checking these values. So the delta X is 1.0625, the delta Y is 0.94. So these are both correct. I'll select, I'll select OK.
I still need create. I still need to create the second point. Multiple different multiple ways to create that second point. What I'm going to do, I'm going to transform translate this point. 3.875 along the x-axis. Go to transform, translate. It's asking me, it's asking me to select any of these translates. So I'll select the point, I'll select end selection. In the delta x, type in 3.875. Double check your value, make sure that it's correct, hit enter. You'll see a preview of the point of the copy point being created. Uh, for the method, I do have copy selected. From here, I can select OK. Master Cam is assigned temporary colors to the original item and to the result of the transform. So if I right click, I can clear the colors. And once again, I'm going to check my work. I'll go to home. Analyze distance. This time I'll measure the distance from point to point. Actually, I selected the wrong tool. I want to use analyze distance, not analyze entity. So 3.875 along the X and then zero on the Y. So that's correct. Let's go back to the project page. We just completed step two, uh, we're moving on to step three. Use the circle center point tool to create circles as shown centered on the points created in step two. Circles as shown, let's take a look at the drawing. So I've got two circles in, or two circles that are concentric with each other right here. One circle is gonna represent the hole that's being drilled in the part. The other circle is gonna represent the counter bore. So the inside circle measures 1732nd in diameter. The outside circle measures 0.813 in diameter. These are um, drilled and counterboard holes for a socket head cap screw, a half 13 socket head cap screw. So let's start by creating the 1732nd diameter circles. Back inside of Mastercam, go to the wireframe tab, circle center point, On the blueprint, the values were given to us as diameter values. So in the diameter field, I'll type in 17 divided by 32, hit enter. We're gonna create more than one instance of this circle so I can lock the value down. I'll move my cursor into the graphics area. And now I can let my cursor lock onto this point, left click, and then I'll lock onto this point, left click. I need to create additional circles, but I want to finalize the creation of the 17 32nd diameter circles. I'll select the blue check, OK, and create new operation. Now I can come back to the diameter field. I can type in 0 0.813. I believe that's actually 13 sixteenths. Let me try that 13 divided by 16. Yeah, so that 0 0.813 is actually 0 0.8125 rounded up. Either version will work. It's a clearance hole for a counter bore. So 0.813, enter. I'll move my cursor into the graphics area. And remember, it's still locked down, so I can create multiple copies of this. Lock on to the point or the center of the existing circle, left click, and then do it over here. Do it on the right side, left click. At this point, we're done with the circle tool. I'll select OK. I'll save my work. I haven't saved it yet, so file save. Inside of the class folder, I'm going to create a working folder or a project folder for the soft jaw mill. I'll create a new folder, right click, new folder, and I'll call this soft jaw mill. And then inside this folder, I'll name the Mastercam file, or I'll save the Mastercam file with the same name. I 
And once you save it, if you look at the if you look at the top of your screen, you can see the path that the file is saved to. From here, I'll go back to the project page. Let's look at the next step. Step four, create the standard levels that we will be using in this class. So once again, uh, let's create these levels. To create levels, I'll bring up the level manager. I'll go to view, managers, levels. Level one, let's call this solid support geometry. Level two, we'll call it solid model. We'll create a third level. We'll call this wireframe from solid. We'll create a fourth level. We'll call it dimensions. At fifth level, we'll call it points. Grade A sixth level, we'll call it material. And then we have one level or a final level, uh, level seven, we'll call it name. So we created all the levels, we'll go back to the project page. That brings us to step five. So step five, use the smart dimension tool to dimension the two dimensional representation of the part. We wanna do this before we create the solid model. If there are any issues with the wireframe or the 2D representation of the part, we don't want them carrying over to our solid model. I'm going to create some dimensions and I'm going to dimension my 2D representation of the part close to what you're seeing on the drawing. It doesn't need to be exact. We're just verifying that our 2D geometry is correct. Inside of Mastercam, I'll make the dimensions level the active level. I'll go to the home tab. I'm going to set the wireframe color to red. I'll go to the drafting tab and I'm going to use the smart dimensions to dimension the blue or dimension the 2D representation of the part. So smart dimension. I'll start by creating these three horizontal dimensions. If I select this line. I can pull the dimension off of the part. To flip the arrows to the inside, I could hit the A key or I can select arrows inside or outside over here. I've got the arrows on the inside. If you need to adjust the height of the text, you can do it at this time. If I select height, I can increase the size or decrease the size, whatever you, whatever you need. So 0.18, I'll increase it a little bit. I'll select okay. If you need to increase the number of decimal places, you can do it here. So I can increase it to four decimal places. Not necessary. In this case, we're carrying everything to three decimal places. Once you set or take care of all the settings or set the uh, values to what you need, you can left click to place a dimension. To create the additional dimensions, I'll start by selecting the left vertical line. And then I can select the center of an existing circle. Now, it's rounding to three decimal places. If I wanted to see the 1.065, I, I could increase it to four decimal places. To match the blueprint, I'll just leave it at three decimal places. To create the 3.875 dimension, I'll go from center to center, pull the dimension off of the part and then left click to place it. So I've created these three horizontal dimensions. I need to create the two vertical dimensions. I can select this line. 
the overall height is 1.88. Then the distance from this edge to the center of this hole, the center of both holes actually, is 0.94. Now, this particular dimension is not the same red color as the other dimension. So something's not quite right with it. So I'll delete it, select it and delete it. Haven't quite figured out what's causing that yet. So I'll go back to the smart dimension tool, horizontal line, select the circle, not what I wanted. Horizontal line, center of the circle. Still giving me that red, Try that one more time. There we go, lock onto the center. Let's try that. Okay, that's better. So for some reason it wasn't, there's something different about it. it I don't believe it was, um, it didn't have the associativity that we were looking for. From here, I'll create the dimensions to define the circles. I could use a circular dimension or I could go back to the smart dimension tool. Either one will work in this case. I'll do one of each. So let's go to the circle, circular tool, circular dimension tool. I'll select the 0.813 diameter circle, pull the dimension off of the part. To flip the arrow to the outside, I can hit the A key, place left click to place the dimension. So that was using the circular dimension tool. I'm not going to use the smart dimension tool. Pretty much accomplishes the same thing. I'll select the inside circle, the 1732nd diameter circle, left click. Pull the dimension off of the part. Now, the decimal equivalent of 1732 seconds is like 0.53125. We don't need to carry it to that high of a, you know, that high of precision. Uh, it's a drill. It's a clearance hole for a fastener. So if I leave this set to 0.513, I know that the, that is the decimal equivalent of 1730 seconds. It's good enough. From here, I can exit the drafting tool. I'll fit my screen. And I'll save my work again. How's everyone doing? Been good. All right, cool. What we'll do is we'll create the solid model and then we'll break for the night. I think we've gone, we've gone over quite a bit, um, but I can get you through the creation of the solid model. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just going to be one extrusion with a few uh, whole items uh, placed on the part. So if I go back to the project page and we're looking or we're moving on to step six. It says use the extrude tool to create a solid model of the part. We're actually gonna use the extrude tool and then we're gonna use the hole tool to create the calendar board hole. So something is missing here and I'll have to update this. Yeah, the numbering's incorrect. It almost looks like something, like something got deleted, uh, but we're gonna use the extrude tool to create the base feature and then we'll use the hole tool under the solids tab to create the counterboard holes. Before I do that, I can make the material, I'm sorry, make the dimensions level or make the solid model level, the active level. So solid model level is active. Let's make the dimensions level invisible. I'm gonna give the part some depth in the Z. So let's look at it from an isometric view. If I go to the home tab, I can control the color of the solids that I can control the color of the solids that we create. I like to assign different colors to different entities. That way I can see pretty quickly, you know, if something's different, you know, I can, I can differentiate between a dimension and I can, uh, you know, different, I can differentiate between a dimension and a uh, wireframe geometry. So, I'm going to change the solid color to something that we that's currently not being used on my screen. I'll change it to say this gold color right here. I'm now going to extrude the outside rectangle for a distance of, I believe, 1.25. This uh, this dimension here is telling us the thickness of the part. 
I'll go to solids, extrude. Brings up the chaining dialog box. Uh, the mode is set to wireframe. I have C plane selected. Selection method is chain. I'll select one of the lines that represents the outside profile of the part. I'll select OK. And we're seeing Mastercam create the extrusion. It's using the default distance and it's extruding it in, extruding it in the positive Z. I'm going to flip the direction. I want to keep the coordinate system and the solid support geometry on the top of the solid model. So I flip the direction and then I'll change the distance to 1.25. From here, I can select OK. I'll save my work. We've got the base, uh, the base feature created. The next thing we'll do is we'll create the counterboard, drilled and counterboard holes that are in the part. Back to the solids tab. In the create section, select hole. For the, well, we can start by identifying where these holes are gonna be. If I go to the position, I can select this icon here, add position. If you select a circle, it knows to lock onto the center. So I selected the center of the 0.813 diameter circle. I'll do the same thing over here. You'll see the two points highlight. It's actually placing points on top of points. So it's kind of difficult to see. Mastercam was telling us to select top of hole locations and then press enter when done. So now that I've selected the two circles, I'll hit enter. And we're seeing a preview of a hole being created in the part. Now, I need to make some changes because this is not the correct hole. So go down to hole style, expand the type, and select counter bore. For the diameter, change this to 17 30 seconds. So 17 divided by 32, hit enter. And you can see that the, the hole that's going through is updated. It also updated with the counterboard diameter, the counterboard depth. We need to match the counterboard diameter and counterboard depth to the callouts on the blueprint. The counterboard diameter, 0.813. And then the counterboard depth is 0.6. It's called, out, it's called out here as a reference dimension, but then it's called out officially here on this whole call out. You see this symbol right here? This is uh, referring to the depth. So they want this counterbore, this 0.813 counterbore machined to a depth of 0.6. So in the counterbore depth, type in 0.6. For the depth, change it to through all. I tumble my view, I can see that the holes now go all the way through the part. It looks correct. From here, I'll select OK. I can look at it from an isometric view. I'll fit my screen. I'll toggle off the visibility of the solid support geometry. And then I'm going to save my work.